The one thing you know about Gary Moore's horses is they will run. And they will, they will run to their best. And horses like Fruity O'Rooney, you don't have a horse like Fruity O'Rooney um, if you're an in and out trainer. You know, what he's yeah. done with that horse, friend of mine's part of the syndicate, what he's done with that horse is nothing short of amazing. You know? Um, I, I've got all, and of course he does it in both codes. I've got all the time in the world. And if we're talking about thoroughbred breeding, my golly, look at what he and his good lady have produced in the way of jockeys. Yeah. Now, that's really. a pedigree, isn't in, it? In, in itself. <laughs> in terms of uh, other two milers next year, we've got, oh, we're going we're to call it Border Suicide, Border Success or whatever. Um, you, you've got the pronunciation spot on. It's Boulder Success. Say it as you spell it. Right, OK. No, it's actually Boulder Suxi. Dave yeah. Scarhill says it. Mark Johnson is the best. Um, I'm finding out tonight. He is the commentator who says it best. Right. But, I mean, how do we think those horses will compare next year? We've got Hinterland as well, um, Nichols. Champagne Fever, I've got the feeling that will go up in distance, but I don't know what you think. Okay. Hinterland was doing all right, um, given a tough ask running in this year's Queen Mother Champion Chase, because he could have gone for the Arkle, and he wasn't out of it at the time that he got brought down when Bailey Green fell on the far side of the track. Um, Balder Succee, success or whatever, um, is... I think he could get at least a place. He's been consistent. The one run that he, the one time he ran poorly, you can put a line through that because that preceded the time that Alan King's horses, mm. um, yeah, that Alan King closed his stable for a bit because he was um, his horses were yeah, suffering from the virus. The and um, yeah, Boulder City he went on to win at Aintree and was possibly found out a bit by the stiff track at uh, Punchestown when second mm. to God's own. Um, he's double figure odds in uh, the anti-post lists that I've seen. He could be a pit of value, but it all depends on the well-being of Sprinter Sacra and also Simon Sig. Now, I, I think we could be in danger after we've heard at um, Nicky Henderson's Open Day last Sunday, the report was in the Racing Post, I think we're in, we're in danger of um, deciding that as Sprinter Sacra and Simon Sig are on their way back, they're all automatically going at the top of the pile. I think we need to see them race first. Mm. We need to see that they've still got what they had when they were at their best. Well, we interviewed Nicky Henderson a couple of weeks ago, actually, on, on Bet Racing Nation, mm. and he said about the two of them that they didn't want to race against... He didn't want to race against each other. So Simon Sig will probably go over a little bit of a further distance, which does, which does make sense, but at the same time... Going back to your point, you've got to be absolutely 100% certain that Sprinter Sacra is, is, is you know, there's, if there's any question mark, you just simply won't run. Well, he, Henderson won't run him if he's not 100%. Yeah. I mean, he just won't do it. Yeah. And um, that's one thing you can say. OK, well... I think with Simon Sig, it would be a mistake to step him up in trip. Um, two and a half miles he stays, but I think they were talking about running him in the King George. I think that would be a mistake because he pulls almost as hard as Sprinter Sacra does and he would be better, I think, at the minimum trip or two and a half miles at a push, maybe the Melling chase. 